All right, joining me now, more on the debate, Steve Forbes, Forbes Media Chairman, Editor-in-Chief, and John Carney, Breitbart uh, Economics uh, Editor and co-author of the Breitbart Business Digest, which is must-read. Talk a little bit more about uh, the debate. Steve Forbes, debates. You were up there once upon a time. You were a presidential candidate debating, which is a very big deal. Um, go ahead, critique it for us. Well, missed opportunities to knock her on the, on the canvas. Mm. Starting at the beginning, where the one good question those two moderators asked was about the last three and a half years, he, the president, should have run with that and cited right at the beginning, where are your incomes today? Where's energy prices today? Grocery prices today? What's happened on regulations? They want to take away your cars by regulation. And just hammered those three or four points throughout the debate that she can't run away from what they've done in the last three and a half years. And she has nothing specific, specific about how she's actually going to do these nice fluffy things she talks about. And just focused on that. Because we we're talking about, if you look at clips of that debate, mm. oh, he, he, he was pretty good. But it got lost in all this other verbiage. Mm. So I, I was looking for a, the opportunity of him to really lay this thing to rest. A couple of factoids. I had this in my riff. A couple of factoids. Not 20, but a couple. Yeah. As you say, income is so important. Um, it would have gone a long way to hammer the point home. Yeah, he just made the point. Mentioned he gasoline. made the point. $2 yeah. under me. What yeah. is it, 3 plus today? Just hit some of those things, yeah. and she, she, what could she say? No, you're right. She didn't have much to say. John Carney, one thing he did go, uh, I, we're trying to get the clip up uh, so people can see it. Um, wait, do we have the sound on the tray? Here, here, hang on. You're, you're going to love this, John Carney. Uh, here's a little bit on the debate on trade. I had tariffs, and yet I had no inflation. Uh, look, we've had a terrible economy because inflation has, which is really known as a country buster, it breaks up countries. We have inflation like very few people have ever seen before, probably the worst in our nation's history. And the interesting thing also besides that was um, he said to her that, uh, you know, you guys kept my tariffs in place. Yes. Right. Now, you have written extensively uh, against Wall Street's consensus, which I don't understand. I'm siding with you. These tariffs are not necessarily inflationary. That's right. The tariffs, we have the proof because we raised the tariffs. Prices didn't go up. What made prices go up? The Biden-Harris policies sent prices through the roof. And Trump did say, I had the tariffs. I had no inflation. Your accusation that, it, that my tariffs are a sales tax is a lie. The real tax is inflation. Mm -hmm. That's what hit the middle class. That's why people are so upset. And again, I think you're right. He, a couple factoids. He should have said groceries are up 20 percent. Rent is up. Every, you know, there's so many things that you could cite to say people are being really squeezed by your inflation tax, not by my tariffs. Median incomes, real median incomes. This number is hot off the press. It's a census viewer number. It's been circulating in a couple of conservative publications, at least. Uh, Trump actually beats Biden by almost five to one, okay? Almost five to one. It's something like $6,000 plus dollars per family, typical family, adjusted for inflation. Uh, Biden's is like, here, check that out. There's this, I'm in the full screen. Um, Biden's is like $1,200 or $1,300, almost five to one. Something like that would have gone uh, a long way. Steve Forbes, today the inflation numbers came out. CPI 2.5%, 12 months. Uh, so-called core ex food and energy, 3.2 percent, 12 months. The whole world expects the Fed to uh, drop their policy rate. Have any thoughts on any of all that stuff? Well, first of all, as we've discussed, and you brought it up months ago, it doesn't include interest rates, which is why That's people right. still still have That's a right. very sour mood. Those interest rates have to be paid each month on mortgages and everything else. And so the whole thing of the Fed, and this gets to well, hope uh, Trump, if he gets elected, hits the Fed hard, finally, on this whole Phillips curve thing, that there's a trade-off between inflation and unemployment, mm. that you conquer inflation not by stabilizing the value of the dollar and stop cheapening it by printing too many of them, but by having a stable dollar and lower taxes. And the Federal Reserve's idea that you have to crush the economy to bring inflation down, yeah, prices will come down because people can't afford to buy anything, uh, but that does not work. And he should hit the Fed on that. You don't have to punish people 
government caused inflation, not prosperity. So you need, you basically need new smart people on the board. I mean, that's... that's and, and, and you should make that point. You don't have to suffer for, for the mistakes of the government. Stabilize, treat the dollar with respect, and the economy will prosper. John Carney, watching this debate, I know you wrote a long piece about various numbers associated with the debate, and you didn't get that kind of specificity. I mean, really, look, the moderators are very biased. They didn't want to talk about the economy. It was only <laughs> one question. What would you have um, preferred? Next, if there's another debate, let's say uh, Fox uh, holds a debate, what would you prefer? Kamala Harris loves to claim that they have caused a manufacturing boom. Uh, this is absolutely right. untrue. Manufacturing has been in contraction for two years. Mm. I did the math where I showed how many more manufacturing jobs do we have today than when Trump than Trump's peak right before mm. the pandemic. It's only up 1.7 percent. Mm. I then did the math and said how many more did we have from Obama's peak through Trump's peak? It was up 3.4 percent. So in other words, Trump had twice as much manufacturing employment growth than Biden and Harris did. That would be a great thing to focus on. They can't get the kind of growth they want because they don't actually like manufacturing. Mm. They only want Green New Deal manufacturing. They don't like people to buy the kind of cars that they want to drive in America. Actually, I know you're right. Growth is not part of her vocabulary. Democrats don't do growth. I got to get out. But I just want to put that in. Any growth. Steve Forbes, John Carney, thank you ever so thank much. Thank you.